Welcome to Industry Innovations. On this episode, we're going to talk about how technology is improving public safety, transparency, and community engagement. We're even going to do a drive along with this vehicle. All of that starts right now. Hi everyone, welcome to Oracle Industry Labs. I'm your Oracle TV host and head of Oracle Industry Labs, Burchin Kaplanolo. Today what you're going to experience how technology is improving public safety, transparency, and community engagement. First responders have to react fast. They need a lot of information to be efficient and accurate to save lives. Today, all this information is in different systems, they're in silos, and they do a lot of manual tasks. To answer this problem, Oracle formed a new business unit several years ago called Local Government. We have built products, end-to-end -end products, from dispatch management to body-worn cameras to even turning this vehicle into a communication device. Our mission is to provide the information they need when they need it. And we're working on building this platform where all this information is in one place and reduces the manual tasks. This technology is applicable also to a variety of industries. Today, our guest is Steve Sione. He is the SVP general manager of local government. But before we start, I want to remind everyone, we had amazing engagement last time. Let's do it again. Ask us any questions you have, we're going to answer. And if you don't, tell us where you're from. Oh, hi, Steve. Hey, Burton, how are you doing? Great to see you again. Great to see you again. So what are we going to experience here today? Yeah, so we've got some of the great technology that we've been building into Oracle One here. Um, and you're going to see some of that today. It should be great. Well, um, I promised the audience that we are going to actually show the car and explain the technology. Where do we start? Yeah, I mean, it's, let's start right here. It's kind of right, right next to us here. This is the vehicle video surveillance system that we built for, for Oracle One. It provides near 360 degree awareness around the vehicle. It's got automated license plate reader technology in, in it as well. So a very compelling piece of kit for the officers and first responders in general to use as they bring more situational awareness, et cetera, into a scene or an incident. That's awesome. So how does this information go from here to dispatch center. Yeah, so we have a communications hub in the, in the vehicle as well. So that information will be streamed in real time up through OCI and then th via OCI down into the dispatch center, et cetera. So it's near real time to a lot of folks that might be interested in what's happening, right? You can think of everything from a fire chief to a police chief or a sheriff would like, want to know what's happening on that, at that incident at any, any given moment. So how is this applicable to other industries? Yeah, it's a great question. So I think when you, when you think about video and, and sensor surveillance and things like that that are going on, there's a lot of places where that's applicable. So I think utilities, I think construction, I think um, all, also I think of you know, public transportation, et cetera. Like a lot of these folks would like to know what's happening on a location at any given time. Actually, we have a lot of engagement at this lab, and especially utility and construction customers has ra raised their hands and yeah. said, hey, I want this technology. Their use case is a bit different. It's about remote assistance. Yeah. They want, because you can't really have every expert on every site, every location, a, a little bit of safety, right? So you have some eyes on the ground to see, hey, what's going on? Let's say you are on a cell tower, you're, you know, mm -hmm. crews that are climbing, you want that transparency, access, but a lot of it actually has been to do with expertise. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the same thing we, we see in public safety because what we're trying to do is bring a blended team together for these complex incidents. And you can't plan for these incidents. They happen when they happen. And it would be great to bring somebody who's got kind of detachment, perspective, a suite of sensors, and, and is sitting back out, uh, kind of not exposed to any of the dangers there to that scenario to help advise that person who's on the scene. That's awesome. So you and I did a car ride earlier. And I promised the audience that they're going to have a view of that. Let's check it out. Yeah. OK, Steve, where are you taking us today? I figured we could get some coffee. Oh, that's awesome. So Steve, you mentioned about the technology, how it's used. You know, we talked about the light bar. If you were to do a 30 second pitch, what would that look like? Yeah. So. You know, first responders are a very time sensitive job, right? They have to respond to complex critical incidents and they need to be able to do so with, you know, really clear situational awareness of what's happening. So we built an end to end system all sitting on top of Oracle cloud infrastructure and security to be able to do that 
for one of the most you know complex and mission critical industries in the world. And what specific challenges does this address? A, a number of them. Like it's it's not a uh, it's a little bit of a complex answer, but not not too complex. So I think a couple things. One is real time situational awareness is really important. So giving the officer, other officers arriving on scene, other uh, other folks at at dispatch, things like that, insight into what's happening yep. in real time. So that's that's one thing. The second thing is usability. I mean, the current technology vendors haven't really kept up with the needs of this space. So when I look at it, the software is not as usable as it should be. It's uh, it's not as glanceable as it should be, as you can tell. Like we're driving, right? I have to be able to look and quickly see what's happening. Yeah, how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, very. I mean, we built some very intuitive, usable um, tech in the, in this tablet here that we're you know kind of right here to the right. It presents the relevant information um, to the driver in a way that's very obvious to them, so that you can glance at it and get back. Think of it the same way Android Auto or, or Apple CarPlay would work. Like that same thought that went into that has gone into our software. So rather than like opening up a laptop and trying to search things and looking at it, you can just, just info show, information shows up yeah. when they need it. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I would say that's exactly, the, the, that's, you know, I kind of laughed at it, but that is what they do today is they've got, you know, the vast majority of responders have a Panasonic Toughbook or something like that in the vehicle. And um, they open it up and they've got really a data dense screen staring at them. And they're supposed to weed through that and get the relevant information out. That's a, that's a tough, that's a tough ask. And how did you guys develop this solution? Yeah. So we partnered with a, a number of police, sheriff, fire, EMS folks from the beginning. So we brought them together with our, you know, technology expert, you know, experts in public safety and really from the beginning built this jointly with a number of design partners and that's been one of the I would say one of the highlights of doing this here at Oracle was the you know the willingness to invest at that level and to partner deeply with industry and you know frankly no other tech company has that experience at partnering with industry like we do that's awesome and when we look at this you know you mentioned EMT you mentioned emergency response first responders so what does the suite include today yeah, so the suite's actually quite broad, um, which is great because, you know, you want to give them as much of an all-in-one solution as you can. So I would start with dispatch command center software. So that that is, you know, how they get sent, what incidents, and who responds. So that comes from dispatch command center software. Um, then from there, you've got, you know, this tablet in the vehicle. This is the vehicle communication system. You've got a records management system so that when they enter information about an incident or a case, it flows in through that. You've got a jail management system because they have to book that person in and yep. you don't want to have them re-enter all that information in. You've got you know some of the hardware technologies as well. You've got a vehicle, you know, the vehicle uh, video bar, which you'll see uh, up on the top of the vehicle. You've got body-worn cameras on the officers. So it's a very um, broad suite with lots of capability. And it's it's been something that, you know, you really need scale investment in tech to be able to pull it off. And so the goal of that is to really reduce the manual tasks, right? So that it, some of the stuff is automated, like they don't have to actually take notes, they don't have to type things. Yeah. It's kind of like automates the whole process so they can actually do their jobs. Yeah, I think that's right. And, and you know, bring some of the consumer technology that we're all used to. Um, you know, you think of the way in which you can talk to, you know, a device in your house today where you can, you know, you can speak to your you know, speak to your, uh, to, to the vehicle as well and do some basic tasks and navigation, things like that. Like this is all stuff that, that we we've actually brought into public safety. And I will tell you, nobody else has had the, um, you know, has the, the capability really to do that. And the other thing that's sort of unsaid here so far is it's all sitting on top of the most secure, most performing infrastructure that, you know, that exists in the world today. How is this different than other solutions? Yeah, so, I, you know, one thing is it sits on, you know, everything from the infrastructure, the database, the OS, you know, it's all Oracle tech. So it's one vendor uh, or one partner for, the, our, for our agencies that go ahead and use it. Yeah, so today most of them are using 
you know, different services from different providers and their infrastructure provider, they probably consolidate on one, one of the major cloud providers, you know, or Oracle clearly, but, but there's a, you know, there's a, a handoff that happens or a shared responsibility for that service that, that doesn't happen on us. Like we, we frankly, we own it all. So there's a, from an agency perspective, they only really have to worry about one, one company doing what they told them they were going to go do. And that's us. Yep. And it's also more secure, right? So as I'm handing off between different third party cloud providers for different services or, or, um, or capabilities, like that's a surface area that folks can attack. And yep. unfortunately, public sector and public safety in particular has been an area of um, a dynamic area of attack for for folks doing ransomware and, th and the like. Yeah. So, you know, one of the key things is, you know, there are a lot of existing systems, right? So the agencies use. How does this integrate with them? How does it work? Yeah. So we built the system with an idea that it would be, you know, interoperable and open across ecosystem in a secure way yep. so we built it from the beginning with that idea because like our design partners that we've worked with in just that group we've got over a hundred different integration points we're gonna we're gonna have to you know we will work with yep. and and frankly we're leaning into that we we believe an open ecosystem is the way to go for these folks yeah um, there are lots of different things that 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 agencies need particularly as you think about police fire and EMS Fire, for example, in, in California is quite different from fire in you know New York City. Um, so very different needs and things like that. And there are different providers that do specialty things there. So we want to be able to work with them yep. easily. We want to be able to integrate with them easily. We want the cost to do that integration to be super low because you know, at the end of the day, these are public sector and public safety. And they agencies. serve us, right? So yeah. we want to make sure. And in that sense, like how do you make sure these things are actually successfully implemented? Yeah, so we do all of our own implementations ourselves. So I have a team of, of folks that have been doing implementations in public safety and in public sector for a while. Those folks work for us. But but you can't think about implementation late in the game. Yep. You have to think about implementation when you're building the product. And that's hard for folks because they're used to just building a product that you then ship um, and then somebody else figures out how to integrate or your team figures out how to do that work later. From the beginning, we've thought about project cost, complexity, and the operational experience of that service. And so that's led us to make product decisions and, and investments in technology that frankly augment the implementation experience we want to, we want to deliver. So let's look at the feature. Now yeah. that we talked about today, when you're looking at the feature, what new features, what new developments do you anticipate? Yeah, I mean, well, the good news is, is with, with us, because we're, you know, we recently into this and we're doing a lot of really compelling work right now is the future is now. Yeah, like we're working on, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, artificial intelligence now already utilizing everything from large language models to vision recognition to you know to um you know to speech to text like a lot of the stuff that you're, you think about and you're starting to see out in this so in that's the to industry. automate the processes so they spend less time the yeah, manual I mean, right yeah that's right and also like i really don't want somebody typing when they're going to a scene but they may want to navigate with the software they may want to say hey go back a screen tell me what's happening show me what's going on yep. and have the software be able to respond to that in an intelligent way, in an intuitive way, because, you know, frankly, these incidents don't happen on everybody's best day. Yeah. Right? This is a, That's you know, right. they're calling you not to say, hey, and I want to have an emergency there. They're not calling to say, hey, I just want to tell you we're having a great day, right? There's mm -hmm. usually something going on. So, yeah. um, and he does says, hey, what's your emergency, right? That's yeah, exactly. Like Yep. Yeah, and you want to be able to get there as soon as possible because that every second matters. Yep. For you know, you think about all the different things you could be responding to, a uh, you know, drowning, a heart attack, whatever. Yep. Um, you know, those seconds are really precious. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, what I heard you mention today is one system, uh, all the data in one place, providing the information they need when they need it, um, having cloud, all the technology on top of it having computer vision, large language models, all this kind of package coming together yeah. and really allowing from different forces, you know, in public safety, from EMT to firefighters to variety of them actually being in the same platform, which doesn't exist today. That's right. That's right. I think you nailed it. Um, and then, and also a platform that is, you know, able to be extended as things happen, like as you know, dr drones become more prevalent in these different yep. industries, different use cases. Like, how does the system evolve to that and have that feel natural? 
That's awesome. Great. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for the coffee. Thanks for the ride, Steve. Yeah. Well, well, time flies, and we have some questions from the audience. Great. This just came in. So Tom from Chicago said, why did Oracle develop a light bar? Yeah, great question. So there's a lot of, obviously, there's a lot of police, fire, and EMS vehicles out there. They've already made a big investment in the technology on those vehicles. What we made is a situation, is a, is a, a system that can easily be adapted to those that existing investment and basically deliver that with a really low total cost of ownership. Uh, makes a lot of sense. And the next question is Beth in New York. She said, how would firefighters use this technology? Yeah, so that's another great question. So it's, you know, I think pretty straightforward how they would use it for dispatch, which is really all about how do you have the software get the right unit um, there at the right time, the, the fastest unit, et cetera, with the right capabilities. But I think beyond that, some of the situational awareness things that you think about, um, the same pro you're going into a complex scenario just like you are with, in, with with law enforcement you're also walking into a complex scenario with you know more situational awareness you'll get a better outcome if that firefighter or that EMT knows what's going on at the scene and then also if other folks think of a doctor who could remote in and almost do telehealth on the, in the, in real time on that incident that would be, that's where I see this stuff evolving to wow that's that's really promising thanks steve yep. Thanks for joining us today. This is the end of our episode. If you want to learn more about the lab, please go to oracle.com slash innovation. If you want to watch our previous episodes, please go to oracle.com slash connect. See you next time.